Hi, this is Lee. I wanted to take a few minutes to address a comment that was left on my last video where I introduced time traffic lights and lane arrows here at Cranston Street and High Street in New Springfield. Now the commenter suggested that since we have a lot of left turn traffic coming off of High and then wanting to turn left again on Mill Street, as well as a lot of oncoming traffic on Cranston Street, that perhaps we should put a yield sign here so this traffic can always move unobstructed and this traffic here will just have to wait uh, until it gets a turn. I thought this was a really good question and a suggestion that was worth exploring in another video. Now just to illustrate what it is we have going on here in the first place, uh, I wanted to show you that the the vanilla game traffic controls we have, we go to junctions under traffic routes in our info view, uh, we have a stop sign that makes Mill Street traffic have to stop before it, it jumps onto Cranston, while Cranston Street traffic is uh, basically opened up to do whatever the Sims need to do. At the same time, we have a time traffic light here where we have three different traffic cycles that are 3 to 12 seconds each. Our first one is left turns off of High Street from and straight throughs coming from the south. Then we have, we allow northbound traffic to go straight and right as well as uh, straight through traffic from the south but no lefts. Then we have our, uh, all of our traffic on Cranston goes on our third cycle. Uh, so that allows for fairly organized traffic flow using uh, the dedicated lanes that we've got set up. We've got a right turn dedicated lane on uh, southbound High Street onto Cranston. We have two dedicated left turn lanes here on northbound High Street onto Cranston. And we have a dedicated left and a dedicated straight through lane on Cranston Street going north. Then on Cranston Street southbound, we've got a left turn lane onto High, a right turn lane onto High, uh, each dedicated. So that allows for pretty efficient traffic flow in this intersection, except for this problem spot here at Mill and Cranston, where our left turns are jumping out in front of our oncoming traffic. Now, as most of you who live in uh, North America, and I imagine Europe and a lot of other parts of the world, you probably know, uh, and it probably annoys you, it annoys me, that uh, left turns in city skylines, the, the vanilla game, uh, they just jump in front of oncoming traffic. They expect oncoming traffic to have really fast brake trigger foot. And that's just not realistic. <laughs> Real life, you get T-boned if you try to do that. So we're going to try to take out the chaos here at this intersection and make this run a little more smoothly. Um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to introduce priority signs in Traffic Manager President Edition while we do that. Uh, so first off, I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to come over here and turn off all of the traffic controls that we've got here so we don't have a traffic light, we don't have any stop signs here at Mill and Cranston. And then we're going to go over here to Traffic Manager President Edition, and the bottom left corner we have Add Priority Signs, which has a little... Uh, gold caution sign, yield sign, and a stop sign in it. So that's the icon you want to click on. And then you just come over here to any intersection that you want to change priority signs on, and you uh, get a blue circle. Click on the blue circle, you get three black circles. You get a black circle for each leg of the intersection where traffic may come. Uh, so we can have, uh, since we have a three-way intersection with traffic coming from each of those directions then we get three of these black circles and if we click on one of these then we will change the priority sign uh, the clicking on this will give us a gold caution sign which allows traffic to move freely then we have a yield sign if we click it again uh, once we make one of these a yield sign it automatically turns the others to gold caution signs uh, since it's assuming that we want the cross traffic to be able to go straight through without any uh, interruption. If we click on the yield sign again, then we get a stop sign. So this effectively sets this intersection up to work just like we had it uh, configured in the vanilla traffic routes view 
except that now we're using Traffic Manager President Edition to control this traffic. Uh, so we've got straight through on Cranston and a stop sign on Mill just like we had before. Now I'm going to head ahead and clear that and we're going to let that go through and we're going to wait and see what the cars on Cranston Street start to do. Okay, so you may have already noticed that our left turn traffic now is behaving more realistically. When we have left turns show up here, we've got oncoming traffic, then the left turn traffic waits before it goes, which is exactly what happens in real life. So this actually changed already the way traffic flows uh, from the vanilla behavior. And as a result of this new behavior, we are actually seeing a backup on this short stretch of Cranston Street onto High Street. If we speed up the clock, we're probably going to observe that that is going to get much, much worse. All right, so you get the idea. This is going to create a problem here. So we. Uh, definitely would want to keep this moving as the traffic light over here it turns green uh, without having to worry about all this uh, oncoming traffic obstructing. So let's go ahead and implement what our commenter suggested and change this to a yield sign. Alright, so now uh, we watch what happens. Now this traffic waits while this traffic clears out. And uh, let's go ahead and speed up the clock and see what happens as we let this run its course for a little while. Okay, so we have much more efficient traffic flow coming off of High Street and onto Mill and onto Cranston going north. But we have a backup that's formed going southbound on Cranston going towards High. If we look at this, this is actually bad enough that it's backing up onto high over here on Factory Street. This is not the intended consequence that we hoped by just adding that priority sign. Uh, so uh, as a result of all this oncoming traffic now uh, and also the stop sign traffic here on Mill Street, these cars are actually so courteous that they're allowing everything on Mill Street to go. Uh, besides that, everything on Mill Street is unobstructed by traffic, by the heavy traffic coming off of high. So uh, this has actually created a much worse problem than we had before when we just had uh, unobstructed traffic flow going on Cranston Street and maybe a few left turns here uh, getting stuck on High Street. Uh, high Street would have backed up. That's actually pretty bad. Uh, but this Cranston Street backing up, that's well, going to paralyze this whole neighborhood uh, for traffic trying to get out. Uh, so obviously this is not going to be a good solution. It's not going to stand the test of time. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and uh, replace this with a coordinated time traffic light. Uh, so we've already got this tra time traffic light right here. What we want to do is create another traffic light over here at Cranston and Mill that is coordinated with the cycle over here at Cranston and High. Uh, so in order to do that, we're gonna stop the traffic light that we have now after we've paused, and we're going to add a junction to this traffic light with this button right here. And all we have to do is hover over the intersection that we want, we can hover over any intersection, it'll give us a blue circle. We uh, hover over this one, click on the blue circle, and voila, we have added uh, another intersection of this time traffic light. So we check it out. We can see that this is just going to stay red the whole time until we edit it. So let's just work our way through it and come up with a reasonable set of cycles that will keep traffic moving uh, from Mill, Cranston, and High all at the same time. All right, so let's edit the first step. Now this is one of the most important ones. We've got our left turn traffic coming off of high and we want to be able to make sure that that keeps moving unobstructed. Uh, now, since we're probably going to want to change 
the dedicated lanes so that uh, movements can left turn movements can eventually be restricted while the straight throughs go from the other direction. Uh, we'll hit change mode and uh, we'll set both of those to green. Now most of the traffic coming off of Mill Street wants to turn right. So even though this is a two lane road where there's only one lane, it's not turn lanes or anything, even though we could add them, uh, just for the sake of, of uh, not making things too complicated, we're just going to change that mode and make it so we have left turn and a right turn arrow. So that if there's nobody waiting to turn left here under Cranston, at least the right turns can go. So we'll make that a green right turn signal and we'll save that. All right, so now the next problem what we're going to have is uh, we want to make Cranston Street southbound be able to get up to High Street. But we want, and while we do that, we want to make sure that we have traffic going through and uh, turning right off of High Street. Now the problem is, is that if we don't clear this intersection out, I'm afraid it might back up that left turn lane and then we'll have a big problem. So uh, rather than going straight to uh, straight to a cycle that would look like this, I'm going to add a cycle in the middle that keeps this going on that cycle. And I'm going to shorten that one to be three seconds long. So guaranteed three seconds. This will make it so that the traffic on the last cycle that went on off of High Street uh, from the, the south will turn on to Mill and have three seconds to get uh, through Cranston and onto Mill uh, without uh, having to stop. All right, so uh, now we need to add a step so that we can continue this cycle and then make the straight throughs work. So we will add a step. That's gonna copy what we had here before. And we're gonna set that to be red left turn, green on the straight through in the other direction. We're going to turn these red. And then we're going to move that up so that it's in the right order. So we've got less, still left, and then we've got straight throughs. Okay, so since there's not a lot of traffic coming through here, we can leave this with three seconds. Um, and might add that actually, add a little bit to that on the next cycle. Um, So let's go ahead and add another step. Actually, let's go ahead and edit this one here. So, all right, so we could probably get away with having the straight throughs here for six seconds total. That'll probably clear all the traffic on this side. That's really what this is about. All right, so now on this cycle we want to keep traffic moving from Cranston on to high so we're going to have this cycle run from 3 to 12 seconds since there's a lot of traffic that comes through um, and let that move on through all right so now though we want to make sure that we get the traffic off of Mill Street onto high while these two lights are green so we're gonna add another step we're gonna make this one a little shorter since Mill Street's not quite as busy. Make that three seconds long. And we're going to turn that red and these green. So now all the traffic will be able to come off of Mill Street onto Cranston while traffic will still keep moving onto high. All right. So now we've got our five cycles. Instead of just three, we've made this traffic light a little more complex. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And that allows all the traffic movements to go at least at one point, and it keeps them fairly unobstructed as they do so. Now the only other thing we need to check is our pedestrian signals. 
Uh, we already took care of these over here, and we used our junction restrictions to restrict people from crossing right here because there's really not a whole lot of reason why you need to go from that side of the street to this side uh, too often because there's just nothing over here for a good distance. All right, so what we're going to do is check our intersections here. Now, first off, before I even do that, I want to do a little bit of thought analysis here uh, as far as our crosswalks go. Do I need all of these? Well, I don't think we do because we're going to have a bunch of people coming from the city, from the, the south on high, and they're going to want to cross the street here and walk to work on mostly this side of Cranston. There's going to be a few that want to be on this side, on the, on the east side of Cranston. So what we're going to do is change this so that there are, there's nobody crossing right here. Uh, since it just, there's not really a whole lot of people that are going to want to go from here to here. It just won't be happening. Mostly everybody's going to be crossing here and uh, maybe a few will cross there. Although I could probably get rid of both of those crosswalks and be okay with it. But for now, I'm just going to get rid of this one. So that way, left turns will be able to turn unobstructedly. We won't have to worry about pedestrians uh, when they're making right turns, since that's the busier leg of the intersection. So I'm going to go to my junction restrictions and zoom in. And I've got that one turned off. I've got, uh, I will, I'm allowing traffic to move through the intersection here. Um, this by default was enabled. All right, so now all we have to do is start our time traffic light again and see how this works. So we can see here now that uh, we have really good traffic flow in every direction of this intersection. We've got good traffic flow coming on Cranston, coming off of Warehouse Street. We've got good flow coming off of Mill. We've got good flow at High. Everything is working uh, really splendidly and very efficiently. We don't really have a whole lot of wasted time where the traffic light is green and there's no traffic moving. Uh, so I'd say that this is a definite success. Now I learned something in the making of this video that I wasn't expecting to learn. Uh, back before the mass transit DLC was released, there was no ability to add stop signs in the vanilla game or to uh, turn on traffic lights on and off like we have right now. Uh, so I used time, I used a uh, priority signs from Traffic Manager President Edition to set up my priority roads. Uh, once the Mass Transit DLC came out and we didn't need those priority signs in uh, Traffic Manager President Edition so much, I started taking them out of my cities because I didn't think that there was any difference. Uh, but as we've seen here in this video, uh, and as I've learned, which I didn't expect, uh, left turns actually behave much more realistically when we're using the Traffic Manager President Edition priority signs versus the ones that come with the vanilla game which basically allow a free-for-all. So if you want your cities to behave, uh, your, your drivers to behave more rationally, more realistically, then you definitely want to use this priority signs in Traffic Manager President Edition. If you don't mind or you're just not going to bother, then the vanilla signs, uh, vanilla stop signs will work just fine. Uh, you can actually go into a setting in Traffic Manager President Edition for time traffic lights and you can uh, set up under policies and restrictions you can make it so that vehicles follow priority rules at junctions with time traffic lights I believe that makes it so that left turns will wait uh, even though they might have a solid green uh, without having to have, an, you know, uh, protected left turns and things like that. Or right turns if you're using left-hand drive. Uh, so, anyway, 
I thought this would be useful to understand how this works. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you liked getting uh, such a nice demonstration like this, if you liked this video, please uh, subscribe so you can get more. Thanks so much.